Hello and welcome to an episode of Advanced GIS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GIS workflows and how to use Python programming and model builder to create reproducible workflows in ArcGIS Pro. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use Model Builder to set up the workflow that we've been putting together for our watershed delineation project. So first off, what is Model Builder? Well, Model Builder is built into the ArcGIS Pro software. And you can find Model Builder in New Project. So if you were in a new mapping project, You could come up here to the analysis tab of the ribbon and find under geoprocessing model builder. So this will create a new model. And how do we then create a geoprocess workflow using model builder? So I'm going to come back over here and open my project. And last time we had gone through the process of turning this elevation raster data set into its watershed components. And we delineated the watershed by going through the process that we highlighted last time of filling the voids, calculating the flow direction, calculating the flow accumulation, snapping our pour point to a location of highest flow accumulation, which is going to represent our stream or river network. And then running the watershed tool based on our flow direction and our pour point. And what I've done here is I've outlined this in terms of model builder. So we can look from beginning to end at the process. So we started with an input raster. We ran the fill tool and got a nap of fill. Then we ran the flow direction to get the flow direction output raster, which we then used to calculate the flow accumulation, which then produced a flow accumulation output raster. We then took the flow output the flow accumulation raster along with the projected outlet location in order to snap to our pore point location, which was highlighted on our flow accumulation raster. That snap pore point along with the flow direction were inputs to the watershed tool, which then produced our output Napa watershed. And you can see that the arrows indicate the direction in which tools take inputs and produce outputs. We see that the yellow boxes are the geoprocessing tools. Our blue circles are the input data layers, the original data. And then all of the green ovals are the intermediate output layers or the final output layer that we have here. And then I have been able to add some text almost as though this were some kind of, an, of a layout. So, how do we get this to work and how do you create your own version of this? Well, let's go ahead and come up to model builder and come down to new. So automatically it creates a new model as you can see here. And if we come over to the catalog and come over to folders in your home folder, you should find in your toolbox the models that you've created. So first thing you might want to do is save this as, as a particular process. Right now, it's just called model one. Maybe we want to call this special works project watershed. W shed. We'll keep it, keep it nice and short. All right, if I come back over here and refresh the toolbox, you'll see that I now have a tool 
in my toolbox called special SPW shed for special works project watershed. In the ribbon for model builder diagram under, I'm sorry, under model builder ribbon, you'll see that you have options here to create variables, iterators, utilities, logicals, labels, and groups and ungroups. So over here in the insert and group is what we're looking for. The first one under tools, you'll see that you do get access to what looks like the analysis tools. But before we get into tools, we're gonna wanna actually create some data layers to be our inputs. Typically, model builder will be associated with a map. It's whatever map you started with. So here we started with map three. And when we clicked model builder, we came over here and noticed that that SP3 map is the one that's still active. If you want it to be associated with a different set of contents, uh, you can simply click on a different SP and then click back over to your model. So whichever one you clicked on last is the one that sort of stays in the contents. All right, so whenever you have your map, it's nice to have the map and the contents open. You then have access to your layers. And we know that this in, is my input layer. So I'm gonna click and drag that onto the map. So when you click and drag your data layer, notice that it comes in as blue. It's because it's an input from your file geo database or from your project folder or wherever you keep your data. You can right click and open to change the values so that you can come in here and change your raster layer to another layer. Click okay. And you can right click and come to create label if you want to label this and come in here and say, this is my input DEM raster layer. And then once you've created it, you can click and highlight it and move this around as needed. All right, so now we have our input raster layer. And it's how do you outline your workflow? And we said the first thing to do was to run the fill tool. So we can come up here to tools and we can come and type in fill and find that there is a fill tool here. So I believe it's just a click. Sorry, it's a double click to activate it. And it comes down here and notice that it's entered in this gray format. The format is the tool, the directional arrow, and the output surface raster. Click once to select, click second time, whoop. Click once to select, then once you get the, uh, the four arrows, that is the click to move. Click once to select, then once you get the four arrows, click to move. So now you have your ability to adjust these. In your workspace, this is a workspace. You can zoom in and zoom out just like a map layer. And what you want to do is assign this input to your fill layer. So how do you assign inputs? Double click to open up the properties of the fill. And just like the fill tool in a geoprocessing pane, you get a pop-up window that asks you for an input surface and an output surface. So if I click down, you'll see that you have all of the variables or rather all of the layers available from your contents window. And at the very bottom, it says model variables. And you'll see that there is the option for something that has been added to your model. So selecting things from the model will grab them that are already in your model, or you can grab things outside the model. So I'm going to grab what's inside the model. And then what do you want your output to be called? In your file geo database, we call this Napa fill. Notice that once you've selected the inputs and outputs, the tool goes from gray to yellow and the output layer went from gray to green. Arrows have been assigned from your input to here. 
So what you can do if you don't like it is come in here and you can get rid of this, which disconnects the arrow. And the second way in which to assign things is to come over to your input layer and go from the four arrows to the hand tool. And with the hand tool, you can click and drag and let go whenever the arrow is over top of the geoprocessing tool you want to assign it with. And then it pops up this context window. And for this, it, it, the options are to assign it to the input surface raster. That's the only thing that's available to the tool. Or you can assign it to some of the environment variables, which doesn't really make sense here. Or you could set it as a precondition. Uh, we want it to be the input surface raster. And we see that the colors now re, uh, relight up. So if I double click on this, I can see that it has correctly assigned the input variable from the model. Uh, actually, it's pulling it from TIFF1, which is interesting, and not TIFF2. When I click TIFF2, it actually reassigns it to TIFF1 anyway. So there we go. Same layer. Not sure why it's showing up twice. So I can bring this up here. And then I can click and bring this over here. I can click and bring this up here. All right, so there's our first geoprocessing tool. We go from our input DEM through the fill and into the Napa. And you can always come over here and right click and create a label. And you can call this label, oops, click, anchor, double click. This is fill surface voids. If you don't like the text in terms of the fonts, you can always double click. Oops. Click once, sorry. Come up here to diagram. And in the diagram tab in the ribbon, you'll see that there is a format for the fonts and you can come in here and maybe make it 14 point font. And maybe you don't like Arial, you want this to be in Bookman old style. Those of you who like Times New Roman, that keep it as Arial. There you go. So you can actually play around with the format of your labels. All right, once we have fill, what we want to do is run the fill into the flow direction tool. Uh, we found that you can find these under the model builder tools, but you can also find them from the geoprocessing pane if you had it open. So from the geoprocessing pane, I can come over to toolboxes and I know that in spatial analyst tools, under hydrology, I have the flow direction tool and I should be able to click and drag it into the map. So there's a second way in which you can bring this tool in. Notice that the flow direction has an output drop raster and an output flow direction raster. That's in case you forgot, click and double click to open the properties. There is the input surface raster that you want. The down arrow, again, allows you to pick from your model variables, or you can always come over here to click your Napa fill, get the little hand icon and drag and drop the input surface there. Notice that it does not automatically create the drop output drop raster, but it does automatically create the output direction raster. So if we come back in here and double click, you'll see that the output has been given the default name. You can always come in here and replace the name. We call this Napa FDR for flow direction. And you can come in here and also change your flow direction type if you wanted to, though D8 was the default way that we wanted. Click OK. And then click and then click to highlight, bring that up. And this output drop raster is an optional output that we're not creating. And that is why it is gray, because it is optional. So if you don't like that, you can always come down here and create a label so that your audience knows. 
that this is the optional drop raster unused. And that font size is much too big. So you come over here and pick a nice smaller size, resize that and bring that over and adjust that. Okay. So flow direction tool. So we know that we're filling surface voids over here. Drag that across, center that. You can say calculate flow direction. For example, this is maybe using the D8 method. So give your audience a little bit more information in terms of what you're doing. I'm going to bring that over just a little bit farther. All right, so then we see that we take our input DEM raster layer. And then we send it to filling the surface voids and then using the D8 method for flow direction to get our Napa FDR. Okay, then the next step is to calculate the flow accumulation. So you can come back over here oops, and click and drag from the toolboxes or come back over to model builder and come to tools, come in here and type in flow accumulation and double click to add it to your model. So here I have my model. This I want to double click to set the input flow direction and come and look under model variables and find my Napa FDR. That's my flow direction. Automatically creates an output. So I'm going to call this a Napa FAC. I have no weight raster, but if I did, I could. Output type is float, flow direction type is D8. Click OK. And we see that the arrows connect, the colors become active. Come down here and put in my flow accumulation. I come over here and drag my layer. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And now we can really start to see how the process goes here, where we can simply adjust the locations of things on our model so that we now have maybe all of our layers in a row, all of our processes in a row. And should you want any additional information under your processes, you can add them as labels. All right, once you have flow accumulation, the next step was to create the snapper point, which took an input layer, which was a text file, uh, when we look at the previous model, we saw that we had a text file that we used XY table to point and projected. So what we can do is assign that here. Coming over to catalog, we see that our data layer has under data outlet geo. So there is my outlet geo. So what I can do from the catalog is click and drag that in here and we see that outlet geo text becomes a blue oval. So might want to add a label to it so that we know, oops, Click once, then click again, double click to highlight or to activate. This is going to be my input outlet coordinates. And then I'll lengthen that. That looks good. 
And in order to get my outlet coordinates from a text file to a feature layer, I need to run the XY table to points. Click and drag, there's my XY table to point. Click once to activate, click the second time to move. Click once to activate, find the handle. click once to move. It is my input table. So here I'm going to move that over so that these are nice and evenly aligned. Maybe I want these tools to be highlighted like this. And what do you want your output feature class name to be? So on the tool, I can double click to turn it on. And instead of this, I'm going to call it my outlet geo. You can come in here and make sure the X field and Y field are the ones associated with the columns in your text file. And we are going to bring in longitude and latitude in the WGS 1984. So that all makes sense. And then we're going to have to then project this. So we come over here and we type in project. And we bring in the project tool. Click once to highlight, second time to move. So the project tool, we want to project this layer as the input. And I'm going to come down here. Notice that it didn't color this time. So there must be some other things that aren't defined. So I'm going to double click to activate. And we see that the output coordinate systems weren't defined by that simple click and drag. The input coordinate system is going to be WGS 1984, which should be based on outlet geo. And we're going to call this outlet. NAD and the output coordinate system we want to steal from our input layer, which should be this guy here. Oops, that's in GCS. Oh, you know, that's not the NAD raster data set that we used. Interesting. All right. So quickly, I can come over here and click and then the delete key on your keyboard deletes the input layer. So then I come back over here and go to my catalog and there's my Napa DEM. Drag that over. Oops, click once to highlight, click a second time. Now this I can bring over as my input surface raster and see how it re-highlights everything over here. Click to create the label. Click once, click a second time to move, double click. This is my input DEM raster layer. Click move. Okay, so then here in project, my input coordinate system is based on outlet geo, and then my output coordinate layer is going to be called outlet geo, and the output coordinate system is based on Napa DEM. Properties. Come down here to spatial reference. And we see that its well-known ID is 26710. So come down here to the output coordinate system, 26710, click OK. Uh, NAD. Why won't you predefine it for me? So this is 84 to 27. Sure. Okay. 
So there we go. Now I have my outlet in the coordinate system that I want it to be in. My input layer goes through the fill, goes through all of these processes. Now I should be able to go into the snapper point. So the snapper point tool, we come up here to the model builder tools and we come in here to snap to pour point, double click to add. There it is. So the snapper point to double click, we need an input raster or pour point layer. So pour point is going to be our point, which is going to be outlet NAD. And ID is fine because it only has object ID lat lon. And the input flow accumulation raster from our model is the Napa FAC. And the output here, is going to be our snap pour. And maybe we refrain from putting a number in the layer because you could always come in here and adjust them however you see fit. Uh, I believe we adjusted it. Uh, we'll try 20 units as our first. All right. So now we have our input layers from the DEM through the fill flow and accumulation and our pour points, turning it into a geo layer projecting it into the coordinate system and using these to create our snap pour point, which we can then use with our flow direction. So we come up here perhaps. And snap pour point add label. Click once to activate, second time to grab here. Set snap distance. And now we have our outlet pour point. We can use that with flow direction to create a watershed. So the watershed tool, if we come back to geoprocessing, it's under spatial analyst and hydrology. Here's the watershed tool. Click once, click a second time. Maybe this can go here. The watershed tool takes two inputs, flow direction. So we have our Napa FDR as a model variable. And the raster pour points we have in our model, uh, we have the, scroll down, there we go, snap pour. Pour point field, we leave blank, output watershed, we're gonna call it Napa W shed. Click okay. I'm gonna move this output layer up here. And perhaps we add a label. And this will be our output watershed raster layer. And find that. OK. So this is a workflow. The way that this works is that you have your input layers that go through these geoprocessing tools. 
these geoprocessing tools until we get to the snap for points and then FDR and snap pour goes in the watershed to create your NAPA watershed output.